Okay. So everybody, this is James. He's my husband. Um, for some people who don't know, although I'm guessing that many of you do, James was a professional rugby player for about nearly 20 years. I think, what, 18 in total? Um, played with a team, played under several coaches, some good, some not so good, um, and basically had to learn pretty quickly how to be coachable, how to take criticism, how to take feedback, and how, as obviously a dominant male, to work in a team environment. Um, and obviously Emma and I were speaking, uh, well, we, we talk about this really every round about um, some of the negativity that people come into the group with, which to be honest is part of the course of group coaching and the journey that you're all on. And sometimes actually um, it's, it's uh, what, what should I say? It's, it's unpalatable for us to read because we know that it basically is going to incite a negative reaction. And we've had this in previous rounds with maybe slightly aggressive posts. Uh, and we've had it in this round with really slightly defeatist posts. So we thought it would be a great way to a great excuse to have James on to talk about being in a group environment, being coached and being part of a team. Emma, is there anything you want to add? No, I think that's such a good introduction to what we wanted to get from this. And then there's like a couple of like mindset, more questions that I have that I would love your thoughts on or like what your theory behind why some people react in a certain way and why other people react in a different way. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, I guess the first question is, um, talk about being coachable, about getting the most out of your coaches and your, and your, and, and this, and your potential to succeed and, and how basically to best achieve that potential and how to basically guarantee you're going to fuck it up. I think, look, firstly, I'm going to be very brutally honest with people. And for a lot of people, it's not, um, it's not palatable. It's, um, you know, you don't want to hear it uh, because life uh, for a lot of people wants to be comfortable. People like to be comfortable. People like to be, um, you know, feel like they've got stuff on, on lockdown. They don't like to be told that actually not doing this right, that this is going to be difficult. And I think everything I, I, I do in my approach to life is understanding that um, you're owed nothing in life. Uh, you're, nobody's going to guarantee anything for you. Nobody's going to fix your body if you don't fix it. Nobody's going to fix your relationship unless you fix it. Nobody's going to make you a success. Nobody owes you any money. Nobody's going to do anything for you and I think you know when you go into a situation like the EC method looking for coaching you, you've got to a point in your in your your life whether it's uh, you're unhappy with how you look you want to improve how you look you want a new challenge whatever your goals are the why you're doing it is 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 irrelevant it's very personal to to, to a person so never you never have to have the same why as as, as everybody else um, how are you going to go and do the get this these goals is, is by embracing you know um Emma and Chloe and the reason you're doing that is because you didn't know how to do it yourself or if you did know you weren't able to implement it and you wanted to pay for some some structure so if you go into this mindset think knowing that you don't know everything and that you're willing to learn and that you want to buy into a structure you have to follow that structure first and foremost there's a great express there's no point having a dog and barking yourself <laughs> there is no point going in to a method like this thinking you know everything and health and fitness is, is I, I hear it from Chloe and I hear it from Emma and I see the, the post, is a lot of repetition in terms of um, uh, nutrition and training. It's the same shit told to you a million different ways because there is no miracle solution to getting in, into shape. There is no magic pill. You know, even piles of steroids doesn't guarantee you're going to get into shape. It, it, you have to put the hard work and you have to eat well. You have to train hard. You have to have discipline. You have to have sacrifice. And you go into this group because you need to learn that. So if you have that mindset to know that I am like a sponge, I need to learn and I want to improve. And every day that you are in this group, you try to be a little better than you were the day before. It's not about coming into the EC method and going, you know, changing your whole life overnight and becoming a, a monk and, and, and doing everything because it's impossible. You will give up, you will fail. Humans aren't able to do that. Some one percenters are able to do that and just get on with it, but others, uh, it's about, you know, changing things softly. And that's what the girls do. They provide you with the opportunities and the tools to change things in such a way that are manageable, but sustainable without trying to do ridiculous diets, drinking fucking diarrhea tea <laughs> by, you know, you know, waste trainers or juicing, detoxing, all that shit that doesn't exist, that you don't need to read about, that all those reality stars are talking shit about, they're just making money. I mean, listen, pay me a million fucking quid and I'll, you know, I'll tell you to inject your eyeballs with, uh, you know, with insulin that's going to make you slim. I don't know. <laughs> 
but it's a million quid and I've got no morals, so it doesn't matter. So the point is that when you go into these things, you've got to, to be open-minded to learn. And the fact is, is whatever you were doing beforehand wasn't working. So I'll give you an example. I wrote, I wrote a book called Perfect Fit and I got someone from the Times newspaper to, to, do the, to do the book and he wanted to be coached by me. And I said, listen, I don't like coaching people, but I, I, I'll coach you. So I said, listen, here's what you need to do. Here's how you need to do it. Go and do it, right? Just go and do it. It's, it's, it's simple, step by step, follow it. So I come back weeks time. I said, how are you getting on? I said, well, you know, I haven't really lost any weight. I haven't done this. I said, well, okay, what have you been doing? And he goes, well, I've been playing, you know, four hours of tennis a day and I've been doing that, you know, this. And I went, I didn't remember seeing four hours of tennis on the, the plan I gave you. Talked about that. He's like, yeah, well, I really like tennis and, you know, I think it's good fitness. I went, how long have you been playing tennis for? It was like four years. I said, so you came to me with an absolute sausage rig. Uh, um, and it turns out your four, hour, your four hours of tennis every day had made fuck all difference to your body. So perhaps the tennis isn't going to transform your body as you would, as you would want. And I said, what about the, the, the tra- the pro- programs, the training programs? I gave Didn't he you? drop his calories to next Yes. Yeah. 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 Well. yeah. So this is the best, but I'll come on to that. So he basically then, I said, what about the training program? And he was like, oh, I'm doing bits of it. And then I goes, and then I'm playing tennis. I said, mate, if you're doing these sessions properly, you ain't walking out the gym, you're crawling out the gym. There's no way you're playing four hours, of, four hours, of, four hours of tennis. Right. And then I said to him, what about the nutrition? He goes, well, you know, it's hard, you know, it's hard, you know, I like to snap, you know, I can't, you know, it's very difficult. And, you know, I, I, what I decided to do is because I want to get results really quickly is I, I've cut the calories down to, you know, I've taken 800 calories off. I went, sorry, what? I don't, and I'm like looking at my book and I'm like going, I'm like turning it upside down. I'm like, I can't, I don't remember telling you to drop 800 fucking calories in the first five minutes of doing my session. They said, 250 calories first week, just looking to it, see how you progress, take your measurements, don't fucking worry about your weigh-ins all the time, body fluctuates, different time of day, don't worry about this stuff, let me know, get on. And he thought he knew best. And I, I called up my agent, my issue agent, I said, I can't deal with this guy because he thinks he has the answers. If he had the fucking answers, he looked like a, a Baywatch model, but he doesn't. He looks like a sausage who writes for a newspaper. What, you know, how are we gonna, how are we gonna sort, you know, how are we gonna sort this out? And what he did is he then understood, he then understood that you had to rein, rein it back in and follow the plan. So being coachable is, is asking questions, is challenging, is not being a sheep, but it's, it's following stuff to the letter. And if you have paid money to come on this, in this course and you haven't done your due diligence, so if you don't know these girls from Adam and you haven't looked at the amazing results, the body transformations, 56 year old women who have never seen their, never seen their feet, never seen their rigs are suddenly like, you know, bam, you know, like fucking wearing like size eight shit. They didn't even, they didn't, they'd put that, pack that away. That ship had sailed and they're dressed like this now. You don't know that they're going to get results. Then that, that's your own fault. You don't sign up to something on the off chance that they're going to get results. You, one of the rules in life is you do your due diligence. These girls have got a, a track record of changing people's lives and changing people's bodies. So if they know what they're doing, you buy into it and then you stick to the plan and you deliver the plan. And do you know what? After eight weeks, if you've done everything, not, um, you know, I had a bit of a bad day and I'm, I ate all the chocolate in the house and nobody likes me and I didn't train because training is hard. If you've done that four or five times and you don't, have you lost any weight? It's your own fault. It's your own fault. There is no one to blame. It doesn't matter if your hormones, it doesn't matter if you're just 99% estrogen, you have nothing else about you. And, but if you don't do any of the training, any of the, tra- the training, if you don't dedicate yourself, if you don't focus, you're going to get nowhere. And that is the difference between people who are successful and people who aren't. That is why there are people walking down the street with a million pounds, driving around in cars, and that is why people get achieve shit in life and don't achieve shit in life because people like to be comfortable. You've got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. You've got to be. It's eight weeks to change your life and change your body and change transformation. And the reason why... Some of, the, some of the people in this group do the, get the results. It's not because they've got a magic formula. It's not because Chloe and Emma really like them and they give them special <laughs> attention. It's not because they've got like a magic book. It's because they do what they're told to fucking do and they dedicate it and they eat it. They, they don't have any excuses. And do you know what? They have bad days, but it's, it's bad days, they manage them. Mm. So they go out, they have a bad meal, they have a bad snack and they go, okay, I've done that and I'm back onto the wagon. They don't go, oh, I've eaten everything. Now I just fuck it off. I can't do anything anymore. And that, and that's how you make a difference. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We all have kind of good days and bad days. We all want to give up. We all want, I can't be bothered to track my food at the moment. I've tracking for ages. Well, you know, Chloe says I've got a little intuitive dart because I keep saying that I'm eating, I'm eating intuitively and she keeps poking at my stomach and you've got intuitive dart. I'm like, 
you're rude, and I push you downstairs. Wait, wait, wait. also, Jay, what did you do the other day in public, Grand Realm? I went, even your arms are getting fat. Yeah. <laughs> That's why yeah. you're so fucking rude. Yeah. They don't, shh, don't. Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> anyway, so, so anyway, so I've got, a, I've got a bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit of a drama at the moment, but I'm comfortable, but I can't be bothered to, to um, track. track. But if I sit there, and I say to Chloe, and I go, oh, It's more about taking responsibility yeah. for your choices. Yeah, and, but yeah. if I sit with Chloe and go, I don't, you know, I'm not comfortable, she'd be perfectly all right to go, well, you're not doing anything to make yourself comfortable. You're not changing your body. So by all means, everyone has a moan, but you've got to sort of stick to it at some point. Yeah, and I'm just going to off the back of that, and then we're going to throw it to Emma for anything she wants to add, say, us. But um, off the back of that, guys, you know that for the last few weeks, I've been saying... I, I've knowingly gone over calories, even though I'm not in a fat loss phase anymore. So technically, I, you know, that's it's not really something which I, you know, can't control quite well. But I've knowingly gone over cal- calories several times in the last, what, August, September, October, November. In the last eight weeks, I've gone over calories multiple times, know that, known that I have. And what I expect to happen then is that I'm going to gain more body fat than I want to gain. And that is what's happened. And I'm not upset about it. I'm not crying about it. I, I, Emma and I always say, we know how to get in shape aesthetically and we know how to get comfortable with our choices and it's one or the other but you can't have both um yeah agreed and I think that was such a good little rant and just kind of covered everything we wanted to cover um one sort of question I have or more like what I want to get your thoughts on this is that you probably will have seen this all the time maybe in like not elite level sports I don't think anyone would get to this point with this mentality but maybe like lower level sport where you see people coming through but the same is true so like let's say you win or let's say you lose a rugby match some people turn that immediately think we need to train harder whereas other people are like spiral down the way and the same is true with nutrition it's like one person might mess up or let's say one person doesn't lose weight for two weeks and they'll be like oh I need to sort my shit I need to make sure I am hitting all these things every single day and actually almost lack of results has motivated me because I need to change something in order to see change Mm -hmm. whereas other people react the exact opposite and think oh I like never works anyway or like one little slip up and they just think any excuse to sort of throw in the towel Mm -hmm. how can you teach that how do you teach that and do you think it's to do with because I think my hypothesis is that it's to do with fixed versus growth mindset yeah whereas if you're like I'm a loser I've always been a loser I never or like I've always been fat I never lose weight compared to this is something I can change it's something I have but it's something I know that I can change if I do the right actions to get there yeah I mean I think firstly you you sort of hit now on the head it's actually it's the belief that um that there's some almost like something working against you and that, you know, some people have it easy. Some people don't, that life's unfair, that, you know, you just didn't get quite the right genetics or you didn't get this. And in, in teams, we have that all the time. And it's very difficult because we have dark, you have dark days or in in any area of life, especially in sport. But what, what combines people is firstly, um, you actually do have a real diversity of mindsets in there. We have people who are, we call energy sappers who, who, Every group has them. They're the people that will come in and moan. They will, nothing's good enough. They will, they will try to find solace in derailing other people. So, that, so what they do is they'll air their dirty laundry and they don't, they're not airing it for any other benefit because they want like-minded people to go, do you know what? It is right. They don't get attention. And like, because you've got different multitudes of groups in there, you've got graduates again who like graduate for eight weeks, you know, think they're like professors of, of fitness when, you know, I've been doing it for like, you know, 20 years and, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm in training five minutes or 20 years. It's the same shit, different days. There's only so many ways to skin a cat. You're not more advanced unless you're sort of going to like molecular science or genetics or lit doing something like, uh, that nobody's ever seen before. It's all the same shit. So you know better than, than anybody else. And I think interestingly enough in the, in the team environment, what you do is you trust in the process so that, that, so that when you have good moments or bad moments, whatever your motivating factor is, so my motivating factor whenever I fail or feel bad is to go is to ask myself firstly, have I done it all I can do? And nine times out of 10, the answer is no, you haven't. Mm. Very rarely does shit go your, not go your way. And you are, you, you are absolved to blame. You know, if someone runs you over and you weren't looking, you know, and if I say you didn't, but you checked both ways, you didn't sit and suddenly miraculously a car came out of nowhere. That's bad. But <laughs> in, in, in everything else, there is, there is, you are at fault. You know, did you, for example, in my rugby, 
did I sleep well enough in a week? Did I train hard enough? Did I hydrate enough? Mm. You split your life down into these core segments. Instead of thinking the bigger picture of like, it's so unfair. I never, you know, I just don't lose weight. I've never, I've, I can't do this. You know, it's, did you follow the plan? Did you track? Did you hydrate? Did you train? Did you recover? Did you sleep? Did you, uh, you know, eat the right food? Did you, you know, all those kind of things. And I think to stop that, that mi mindset, whatever motivates you, it's the fact you're trusting in the process. And, and there is a, there is a, there is a cutoff point to that, but you know, it's an eight week plan. For example, in this, life's obviously a longer battle, but like an eight-week plan that you set yourself aside to do. If you don't get results immediately, that's, that, that is so many factors. You know, genetics play a part. Um, you know, your starting point plays a part. Um, you know, or, or lots of things that, 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 that aren't level. You're not on a level playing field, but you trust in the process. So, you know, if someone goes, oh, I haven't failed, I'm going to work harder, but someone goes, oh, it's not going well, you just go, do you know what? I'm not going to have my moment. I'm going to feel bad, but I'm going, I'm going to go again. And your motivation might be that you're spending money on it. It might be that you're unsatisfied. It might be that you're single. You want to find a man. It might be because you want to, you want to, you want to find a man. It might be because you want to prove yourself, you know, prove something to yourself, whatever it is that, that, that those reasons are always different, but it's really important to, to basically understand that trust in the process gives you confidence to stop that. So it unifies yeah. us, it unifies us together. So in the opposite of the change room, you're going to have those people with those different mindsets who are going to go, Oh, I just can't make it into the England side. I'm just not going to get picked. And they'll, uh, and if they buy into the common goal and trust the process, trust the coach, that's fine. But that being said, this is going to be a harsh comment, but some people in life have done and achieved all they're going to achieve. Some people will sign up to this group, and they will just, it will, they are wasting their time because they will never get anywhere because they are that mindset. And that is, that is what separates people. And that's why life is not equal in terms of, you know, talent, ability, attitude. You know, some people, the height of some people's life is get married, have kids, nine to five, die. That is basically, that is the, that is the upshot of it. Other people that, look at it and go, I want more. But also that's fine. If that, it's all relative, yeah. right? So I think this, this phrase does not get used enough, in my opinion. It is so much, but it's like right front center. It's all relative. So whatever you take your joy from, whatever you take your sense of accomplishment, sense of achievement from, that is absolutely fine. Um, but if you decide that you want more, you have to put in the work to achieve more. Um, and, and that's a non-negotiable. I actually think that's a fucking brilliant question. And so you all know like I, I go to therapy uh, once a week over Zoom now um, just because it's really good for me and it just I started getting really bad anxiety and, and panic attacks in my how old was I 21 in my early 20s so I started going to therapy and something that I was working with my therapist on this morning or I should just say conversing about which is so interesting is that one of my driving personality traits and we share this and Emma you 100% share this is growth so, so uh, personality, there's loads of personality kind of tests you can do online. I wouldn't really recommend that you can do them unless you have a therapist who can read them accurately, kind of like a doctor. You know, they are mental health professionals. Um, one of my driving factors in life is growth, which is fantastic. And it applies to him too, which is one of the very few <laughs> reasons why we're compatible. Um, but I was, we were talking about switching gears in and out of different mentalities, because obviously, guys, no matter how goal-orientated you are, and he's the same, you're going to have a shit day sometimes. So we're talking about managing that and switching in and out of mental gears. And he was like, you give, you give a name and it doesn't have to be a name, but give, give us something, give a, what's it, a tangible kind of title to that person that you think of that has that growth mentality. So a time in your past where you were like, I'm going to fucking go get it. And you did it. Give that person a name and a, and a, like I say, like a tangible um, uh, kind of person in your mind and when you're having a shit day and you feel like shit but you know that you still really want to achieve that goal try and flip back into that character that you've memorized that you've uh kind of characterized in your brain as part of who you are and sit with yourself for half an hour an hour an hour and a half if you need to and try and switch gears back into that person and that's a really good trick because it obviously goes without saying that james is more growth than anything else <laughs> Sorry, that was a he's funny a grower. Joke. He's a grower. It was a funny, it <laughs> both a funny physique joke and sexual joke. Um, but no, it, James is very, very growth orientated, and it is one of my things. But it's definitely not something that I don't often have to work to switch back into. I'm, um, 
Go on. I mean, I will say that you know, I don't walk around in a positive mindset uh, all the time. I, I, I struggle. <laughs> I, I feel, I, you know, I feel, yeah, I feel bad. But, but what you've got to understand is about these kind of things as well is that it's 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 not just you operating on your own. So now I said that some people have achieved all they're going to all, all they're going to achieve. You have to look sometimes at these situations and what you're undertaking, even though it's just a you know body transformation, is who you surround yourself with. Because when you have these bad days and these bad wobbles, what you need around you is good people that will help you and develop you. That's why when your mum said to you when you were younger, don't hang around with so-and-so, they're going to drag you down. And you're like, mm. shut up, mum, you don't know what you're talking about. Right? Inadvertently, she was right. Not because you know, they drove a dirt, dirty car and you know this bloke had a dirty fingernails like my mum, like my mum told me to avoid people. But it's because you know if you surround yourself with people that justify your lack of endeavour. So when you come into the group and you throw a hand grenade out there and you haven't done what you're doing and you are you are putting something in there that is going, you know, is basically you just venting the fact that you've been shit at all your stuff. You're looking, you're looking for people to go. It's okay. Yes. Oh dear. Poor you. Everything's really bad in life. Yes. You need people to console you, but you also need people to, to tell you, do you know what? Actually, no, this isn't good enough. This is how you can help it. And that's why they say something called relationship capital, which is basically your friends, your family, your partners, who you hang around with. You know, it's always those negative people. Life's always too bad. Oh, nothing happens. You know, that's okay. A little sappuccino every now and then is okay to keep the world go by but not every day. And if you look at your lives who are on here and you haven't got people who are supporting you, haven't got people who are following you, you know, if you have a wobble, I have a wobble, I reach out to Chloe. Chloe's got my back straight away. James, you know, if you're worried about this, this is how you do this. What do you enjoy? We go back, we make a list. I feel better. We crack on. That's not me rattling around in the house going, mm, I don't like it, but I'm lucky to, I'm lucky to have found that. And then the next thing is, is that it is, within this process is why you have the, the, the two girls and why they're so important is, is just getting feedback. Not feedback from people who you don't respect. So, you know, for example, how many of you posted a photo or told a partner that, you know, look, at you've made some progress and they've gone, oh, I, don't, I can't, can't see a different. I can't yeah, see a different. You know, or you put a picture up online, they go, I, don't, I, just can't, I can't see. You look better in the first photo. Oh. All right. All that shit. What you need to do is, is seek people that you respect, who you know are going to have an honest opinion and get their feedback. Mm. And that helps. So if you are, you have a strong mental mindset, whatever your motivation is, we talked about. If you've got good people around you, you gravitate towards good people. And you also search out, like uh, Emma and Chloe, two people who know what they're doing, who will give you honest feedback, who are not going to mess around. That's kind of a nice triangle where you can develop and everything else. But if you don't have that, if you've got a weak, if you've got a weak mindset and you think life owes you, you don't have anyone good around you, and you know, you're, you're seeking feedback from people who are just going to blow smoke out your ass. You want a recipe for, for failure. And I think these are things that, that will be quite useful to think about yeah and i think that's one of the benefits of having the group like a lot of people are you know maybe their parents don't support or like their loved ones don't really support that they want to change and often that's because it's almost like flipping back on them like oh if you want to change that means i should change that makes me feel bad about myself so i'm going to discourage you from changing so yeah. that that doesn't reflect on me yeah. but what you've got here with the ec method is a whole group of people who yeah, have their own whys and they have their own goals. Some people are losing body fat, some people are building muscle, some people want to maintain. But the common denominator is we all want to better ourselves in some way yeah. and we all want the best for each other. And when the group works, it works so well. Like the social norms that are set out in that group, that so everyone's positive and encouraging. And like even last week we were discussing the body confidence and how like we just don't accept when people speak neg negatively about themselves like it isn't accepted within the group and that's where I sort of draw some ties to like I'm sure what like rugby groups were like where some stuff just is not accepted like you turn up for training on time no one needs to tell you that because if you don't that's like nobody does that like it's don't, just not what we do it'll, it'll be flat it'll be flagged and yeah. I think we remember the team is people talk a lot about culture right and create an environment and actually it, it doesn't it's not created um you can say culture all you want you say we've got a great culture got a great culture really culture you know you either have or you haven't it's either paper thin it's either one person comes in and throws a grenade and all the deck of cards come tumbling down or you actually have a actually have a culture and while you while this is a selfish endeavor in terms of, of transforming yourself you have an ecosystem that you have to look after uh, because of the because of the benefits in there, and Chloe, one of the things she wanted me to you know talk about is, is is if you if you throw something in there like you know I'm having a bad day, 
right? Or, or, or you know, something, and you're wanting people to, to pump your tires, that's fine. That's you... fine, yeah. And I want to distinguish between that. You guys, you're, you're more than allowed to come into the group and be like, this went wrong. You know, we've had rounds where people have been like, I'm going through a divorce. My dad had a heart attack. My grandma died. Like, shit happens. And we want you to utilize the group as support and vice versa. But recently, there was one post, which Emma and I just couldn't, I mean, I just, we couldn't bring ourselves to, I don't even think, comment on, because if there was no need for it. It was so negative, and nobody was getting anything out of it. Surely this person wasn't getting any, anything out of it, because she was done. Nobody reading it was going to get anything out of it, because they weren't done. We're halfway through. And I was like, why would you do that? So I wanted James to kind of distinguish between, when it can be really good, actually, it can be a positive to be negative, and when it's just out and out negative and destructive. So, so we have meetings, you know, or we did have meetings in the team environment. You, you, you make a mistake on it. So I, I miss a tackle, it's blatantly. Everyone can see a miss a tackle. Coach said, what happened there? You know, I say, listen, sorry, lads, I'm fucked up. Uh, and in my head, I'm thinking, do you know what? I probably didn't do my extra tackling. I got my process wrong. Because you break everything down. Everything you do in life, you can break down to a process as to how you do it. And I was like, Joe, watching the video, I didn't get my feet close in enough. I, my head was there. I wasn't really, you know, bought buying into it. I can identify that, but you have the, you have the honesty. Where people go wrong is that they don't own up to their mistakes. They don't, they don't do that. And it wears away at the team, at a team environment. So coming in and saying, do you know what, guys, I'm having a bad day or this has happened is, is, is fine. Coming in and questioning, you know, calling other people out. Yes, there's a time and a place for that. I don't think in a public group, in a team, it works quite well. But, you know, um, and I just think saying stuff just to make yourself feel better or just airing dirty laundry or stuff is, is just not, it's not, it's not conducive. And, in, in normal life, and Mike Tyson did a great quote, uh, said a great quote the other day, is that social media has given, uh, made a whole load of people a lot more relaxed about speaking shit without someone coming and smacking them in the face. And, and that, and yeah, but Mike Tyson is a notorious sex offender. Yes, down yes. But I, I didn't, so I didn't, maybe we shouldn't be I taking wasn't, advice. I wasn't him. advocating him, but the, <laughs> the principle still stands, is that while you're on social media and that's that, you, you, you've got to be, you've got to understand that people receive things differently. And, for, and some people have rock, you know, paper thin confidence, other people are invincible. And that when you speak in that group, it's not just someone like you that's listening, it's a someone you know, completely different and understanding how people receive it. And yeah. so if you can add, then add. If you need to air about something, that's fine. But don't bring negativity to, to things because there's no need. You know, just saying that you haven't done anything, you haven't achieved anything, you haven't lost any weight and you're wondering why you signed up. That's not help, helpful because I fundamentally, if, if the girls were ruthless like me, I'd go, right, mm -hmm. did, you, did you eat all the food this week? No. Did you do all the training? No. Did you snack? Yes. Well, shut the fuck up and go away and we'll sort it out. But you can't you do that. You have one client. I have one client. You can't, you can't do that. And you have <laughs> Emma, to tolerate Emma it. Emma can handle it. And you have to, like, go on, bring it. And you have to talk people yeah. off food. So if you're doing that and you know you're one of those people doing it, don't do it because the team can be the best thing for you because you're all striving to have a goal. You're all starting from different points. You're not in competition with anybody but yourself. And if you don't understand something and you want to help someone, that's fine. But also judgmental. Nobody's better than anyone else. It doesn't matter if you've been playing rugby for five minutes or 10 minutes. It doesn't matter if you've been trained for five minutes or 10, 20 years. Nobody's better than anybody else. And, you know, you, everyone thinks they've got an opinion, you know, everyone's got an opinion and thinks theirs doesn't stink. And it's like, you've just got to kind of be patient and see it as a real positive tool to helping people. Yeah, I think we sort of, we discussed this a bit, didn't we? That, like, we don't mind. If you come with problems, mm -hmm. as long as you're asking for a solution, like, yeah. if you're like, oh, I completely messed up. I don't know why, but I've not been able to stick to anything this week. What like is there anything that you know that has helped in the past or like where should I start? Like we, we will always help you, yeah. always. If you're looking for a way to better yourself, we will help you. But yeah. what's frustrating for us is when you haven't done anything and then you're complaining about the results that you didn't get from the effort you didn't put in, yeah. with no yeah. like oh but I'm willing to try this. Like if you're willing to try, we will back you 100 percent. But yeah. it's when you come not willing to try that it's like, well, there's there's nothing we can do. And now you're just spreading negativity in the group. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, this is it, guys. Exactly like I've, I've already said. And I'll just, I'll just uh, reinforce it here. If you have a problem and you have a bad day, you are entitled to throw that in the group and ask for support from, from either grads or newbies, the entire group, or Emma and I specifically. I think in the last group, actually, more so than any group we've had, we had a lot of people who really only wanted feedback from Emma and I, and that's fine as well. Totally fine. Whatever it is, fine. Um, again, as I said, if you're just coming in to kind of throw a grenade out there, 
or to basically, yeah, to basically say I'm giving up. To be honest, the only thing, the only comfort that I can think you would get from a post like that is to have other people turn around and say me too. Otherwise, there's no reason why. I can't really figure it out. Um, however, if you have a shit day with motivation, reach out to us. And this is the next thing we want to touch on. I'm aware we've got like 10 minutes left. So one thing that we wanted to touch on with James, and James and I have spoken about this, Emma and I have spoken about this, and all of us are on the same page with this. And I think the reason why we're all on the same page with this is because we've all tried and failed and tried and succeeded. So we know what that, again, sorry guys, journey looks like. And we also know what real life out and out motivation uh, you can and can't expect when you are on that journey. Uh, we all would love to put our hands in a bucket and be flooded with motivation and off we go for the whole day. It fucking doesn't work like that. And if you think it's going to work like that, you are going to fail pretty quick. So James, do you want to just give a, a like open and shut um, thought on motivation? Is it constant? Do, can you always channel it if you think of something? Do you sometimes have to shrug through without it? Talk about that. Look, the problem with motivation is, is that it's a nonsense from, from start to finish. Because motivation is a transitory emotional feeling. That one minute you're motivated, one minute you're not. You're never fully motivated at all times. You know, and, it, and, it, and to seek motivation from other people, like I get people reach out to me on social media all the time, oh, just, you know, I'm not happy with this, I'm not happy with that, I'm having a really down day. Can you give me some words of motivation? Yeah, shut up, stop moaning, get on with it. <laughs> right, you know, that, that, but the point is that it, it's, some days you feel motivated, you're like, I'm going to train today, and you go outside and it's cold, and you're like, actually, I'm so motivated, but I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do it later. You know, it's the difference to someone who then go, comes to the door and goes, do you know what? I don't feel like doing it, but I'm going to go back inside because it's cold. Get my fucking coat and I'm yeah. going to go and I'm going to go running and I'm going to do it. Just on that, Emma did a post. I don't know if it was a reply to someone with her and her coat going up her morning walks and love that coat, by the way. Um, and for me, like what I do is I make sure that I have a hot flask of coffee to warm me up as I start stretching and getting that. I even put a heater in our garage gym. Don't get us wrong. There's things you can do to make it more comfortable. You don't have to be in hell all the time. But you're not always going to start with motivation, right? Sorry. Yeah, and, if, and and I think you know people derive again motivation from different things. So my my motivation was always like a lack of confidence around my ability, my desire to like, oh. prove myself yeah. and to um, you know want to want to make the best of what I what I could do. And, and I had a lot of I I used a lot of fear of like if I'm resting and other people are training, you know, am I going to miss out? You know, I'd go out and eat a bad meal and have, and have a few beers and I'd, and I'd feel terrible and be like, I'm a, you know, I've let myself down. I need, to go and I, I need to go and train harder and work harder. And that would be my motivation. What I found, though, was, was that when, you're, you know, when you used to play only eight games a season, you could do all of them on emotion alone. So you can do stuff on emotion. You can't do life and training and, you know, 30 games a year or eight weeks on emotion only you need to you need to keep going back to why you're doing it and what and what, what what you're doing it for and one of the tools that i always used was music was music was something that if i whatever mindset i'm in if i get up in the morning i'm like i can't be bothered to train it's cold i'll do it later i'll do it because you all have the voice everyone has that little voice that says do you know what you trained hard yesterday just have a little rest you know you're, you're fine you're in good shape you can show you know Everybody has that voice. And my, my day is all about not listening to that voice, not giving into that voice. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways I do that is I put music on that has an emotive response for me. So I, I make playlists that I'll change once a month because we all know that if you listen to a tune, you're like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. You listen to it 400 times, like I'm going to kill myself. Is You have to keep changing that stuff up. But music is a great tool to, to, to get yourself going. Uh, and I think you should look at other people for inspiration. But motivation is, is something you don't need. It's It's about you know why you're doing what you're doing the reasons for doing it and even if you have a notebook i always got a notebook i always write notes on my phone when i think of something why do i want to achieve something what am i doing here what's my goal where you know why am i doing it you know who chloe has pictures of, of women that she wants to aspire to look like when she's training on the, front of her, on the front of her phone because when she goes to reach for something bad or a donut or feeling a bad day on a phone cover straight away it's got this woman she's like fuck the dedication to get to there is is where i need to be and she puts stuff down and we all have those tools and, and you, you, you there's a whole array of tools at your disposal to help you through this process 
but stop looking at motivating and stop thinking you're motivated because it won't last at all. What yeah, you need to have is like a tough is mental like, strength. It's like when you see a shooting star, when you're looking up at the sky and you see it and you're like, oh, wow, that was amazing. I looked up and there it was and I caught the whole thing. And it's the same with motivation. You're fucking lucky if you catch it in the right place at the right time because it is nothing else but sheer luck. Um, Emma. <laughs> yeah, I, I think with motivation, especially with fat loss or changing your body or more like things that you have to do daily it's the action that drives the motivation so what we find is that you know people are a little bit motivated to start but they've paid and there's that accountability aspect and they're quite excited to start what mo what's more motivating than results like nothing basically yeah. once you start seeing results but what comes before results is action so if you wait for motivation which is not coming then you never get results. Whereas if you can take action initially, yeah. work at it, then as you start seeing results, that's motivating as hell. It's working what you're doing. Yeah. That drives further motivation. So I often think that when people, like you, you guys must get this question all the time as well, but like, how do I get motivated to start? And the answer is you don't. Like you just have to start. Like you start, you start easy. As Chloe's saying, it doesn't have to be really hard. You can make it as easy as possible. So instead of, I don't know, it's a really cold gym. You can go into the gym when it's warm instead of like completely overhauling your life. We break it down into small daily things that you can do that we know are going to get you closer to your goal yeah. and track them. And that doesn't mean like tracking everything on MyFitnessPal, but like be accountable to what you're doing, even if it's ticking things off every day. If you can see it and you're accountable to that, that's going to get you closer to your goal. Uh but yeah, don't expect to be motivated at the start because I just don't think it's realistic that you will be. Just qu just quickly, and then and then we, you can end it because well. I know that you're, you're tight for time. But this is a really good point that Emma made, guys, and I want you all to remember it and cling on to it. Motivation isn't necessarily the first thing that will happen. Motivation might come later, but you're never going to get it if you don't put in the work first. So she's bang on point, and this is why we talk again about why low carb diets are so you know can be such a great tool initially with clients because they see the scale drop, they get excited, their motivators carry on. We can address the carb fear later down the line, but obviously as coaches, it's suboptimal because we don't want to we don't want to implement that carb fear in your head, which we're then going to have to untangle later on just to get you to stay on track. So. It, it coaching is and, and being coachable is um you have I, I really think that you have to think this through and you have to be very very pragmatic here work hard you will get the results it will happen but you have to work first when it happens it does get easier because not only is the habit in motion you now are used to working hard it's not so like intimidating to you anymore but you get the fucking results and there's the motivation and then you really are off and you know you'll see emma and i especially me like i put on the post all the time like you're now off to the races you can tell when somebody's done the schlock they're getting the results and they're off they're ready um and of course you know not everybody it's going to start there and not, and for some people it might take longer, but really there's no other route and you have to understand that. Um, I'll let you finish. Yeah. I mean, I think, look, there's, there's always been some, some great points. I think, you know, in life you can be like a sniper. You can sit there <laughs> waiting for that perfect shot, that perfect storm, that perfect moment before you pull the trigger uh, or, or, you know, I, or the other way, you can be someone just spraying bullets, trying everything and failing at everything. It's a, it's a happy medium between knowing when to take the shot, when to take action, when to get on with it. And sometimes, exactly what you said, just starting the process is a start. Just getting up and doing it and, and, and not trying to invent, reinvent the wheel, not trying to do everything in one go, but actually just chipping it away at it. And I think what will really help people in this, in this, in this conversation is whether you like what I said, didn't like what I said, it should spark a conversation with yourself about who you actually are and how you are. And it might mean you going off to room on your own and having a difficult conversation with yourself and identifying what kind of person am I? Do I need approval from other people? Do I am I you know am I strong willed? Am I do I do I need motiv this, this idea of motivation? Am I mentally just going to get up and do stuff? Because there'll be people on that group who just get up, they do it, they tick it off. The beauty is, is that no that you don't have to think. You just have to do. And all you have to do is follow the plan and follow. And that is half the battle. There's no creativity needed. You can use music. You can use different times of the day. You can do whatever you want to do to help you get up and do it in this cold weather. Uh, and trust me, everybody likes cake. Everybody likes donuts. Nobody likes having to sacrifice. But sacrifice is the key to life. Sacrifice is the difference between being successful and not being successful. You know, being dedicated and being a failure. Being someone that is full of excuses whose life's against them or someone who gets shit done. And, it's, and, it's, and that's, the, that's the big difference. And I think you need to know yourself. And then when you come into that group 
and you see people, you will start spotting people. That person thinks life's against them. That person's a doer. That person's mentally weak. And you will see it. And you need to know how you learn and how, what you best for you. And then use the girls, use other people to, to the best of your ability. Uh, and maybe, maybe be self-reflective and go, do you know what? Maybe I am where I am in life because I've been a fucking moaner and a whiner. And I think people are, uh, people are going to do stuff for me. And, gonna, and a white knight's going to ride over the hill. And actually, it's time to sharpen up and get some stuff done. And that's your motivation. And write the, note, write the notebooks every morning you wake up. Not like into all that affirmation stuff, but write that. Look at the points. You're getting in shape because of this. You're doing this because of this. You don't want to change because of this. And that's all you need. I, that's such a good point. I think reflecting on why you think stuff, which is so, like, we really don't do enough. And it's so easy to, like, fall into a victim mentality without questioning whether you are falling into that. So, like, calling yourself out on that even with the comparison thing, like we've been speaking this week a little bit about comparing yourself to others. And that's massively important within a group setting that you don't let that be a negative, Yeah. but yeah. nobody ever questions why it's a negative. So it's like, Oh, okay. I've, if I see someone in the group with an amazing physique that I want, and that makes me feel shit about myself. Why are you feel, like, why does that make you feel shit about yourself? Like that, does that say more about you than them? Yeah. Yes what are you going to change to get there? Or what are you like, just try and figure out why you're feeling like that. Cause someone else doing well, shouldn't make you feel bad. I mean, I'm jealous. I'm jealous like nine, 10 times a day, at other people that are doing what I want to do. It doesn't make me feel bad about myself. It makes me go, have I done what I need to be doing today? Have I have all the things that I'm trying to achieve? Have I, have I put the work in and, and all the time the answer is no. And then I go, right, well, fucking I'll go and put the work in and go and do it. And that's yeah. what motor. And it's, and it's a nice check. Because if you're looking over the garden fence the whole time, life always looks better over yeah. there. Uh, and ever, you always want what they've got. But if, you, if you're taking care of shit your side and you're trying to be 1% better each day, yeah. in eight weeks' time, you will be light years ahead of where you started yeah. in a really good place. And then you might have to go another eight weeks and then another eight weeks. And then at some point, you'll be where you want to be. And that's the best you can be. And that's what matters. This is what we said. Um, and we'll wrap it up here because I know you've got a meeting. This is what we said though, guys, in the last one, in the last live that Emma and I did, was I don't think it's a bad thing to compare yourself to somebody else and let that be the catalyst to catapult you into the plan that you need or the road that you need to walk in order to get to where they are. It is a bad thing, like James has said, if you see that and you stand where you are and you keep looking. Because all you're going to do is hate your fucking self, hate your fucking life, everything at the end of it. So do it. Feel shit about yourself. Like Emma said, feel shit. Be like, shit, man, I'm shit. And then go. Use it to go. And I promise you, you know, like I said, the, the most success I've had in my career or with my physique or whatever um, has been because somebody else did something that made me fucking angry with myself and with them. And I said, why? Oh, oh I want that too. And I fucking did it. And like I said, I don't, like, I'm not in great shape right now. If I lifted up my top, you would not see one ab on me. But again, that's the decision that I made and I'm happy and comfortable. And I'm sure in a few weeks time, something will piss me off and I'll get, <laughs> I'll have to be like, well, I should probably get back in shape now. Um, Emma, do you have any words of wisdom to end on? Because I think you two are quite similar, although you're a bit more savage than that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not like that all the time. I'm only playing it up because it sometimes... Because we better, told him to. Yeah. We were like, tough love, tough love. <laughs> no, I think, I think tough love is useful. I find tough love really motivating. And obviously, we've kind of touched on this, but what you do find motivating or what does resonate with you is so individual. And some yeah. people will listen to this and be like, that completely turns me off. Other people will be like, I am amped up and I'm ready to absolutely smash it. Yeah. And hopefully most people are the latter, but thank you very much for your time. And I think it's been so useful to people. I think it's been highly entertaining. Um, all right, guys, we will see you on, oh, tomorrow for another live. Tomorrow. Of what? Right, I've stopped recording.